Hey guys, this is Echo Sowers with another tutorial for ADSR in SouthTutorials.com. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel and you'd like to do that, you can sign up at youtube.com forward slash ADSR Toots. So today I'm not going to be making a sound or showing you guys how to recreate a sound. I'm going to be discussing how to make a silence reverb effect more musical and hopefully find its way into more of your productions with these tips and tricks. This is going to be heavily geared towards EDM producers, but you can actually find out information on this um, for every tempo. You just have to look it up or do the math. Basically, every reverb plugin is going to come with a pre delay knob. And in that pre delay knob, it's determining how much time in millisecond values typically elapses before the reverb actually kicks in, so before you can audibly hear the effect. Now, most reverbs will not display this that parameter in a note value, they'll display it in milliseconds. Typically with, with silent, if you have the sync button illuminated, it'll show all your times in note values. If you have it off, see how these are just in uh, milliseconds. Well, the reverb pre-delay, it will not show, no matter what you do, in note values. When you get into a really rhythmical, when you get into a really rhythmic genre like EDM, and you have a lot of elements, you have bass, clap, snares, percussion, you have leads, stack leads, a lot of reverb, a lot of delay, it can really actually help clean up a track noticeably and make it less muddy sounding and more clear and crisp if you sync all your pre-delays to predetermined note values given your BPM. Well, with a genre like EDM, where a lot of it's all at 128, this is pretty easy to discuss and show you guys these tips and tricks because it'll hold true for electro, progressive house, uh, progressive house, things like that. So let's get into it real quick. In this reverb, if I turn it on, I have a sound pulled up in silence. And I'm playing live for this tutorial, so if I mess up, I apologize. But let's let's look at the pre delay I have right now. It's 88.57 milliseconds. It sounds good. It doesn't sound bad. It just sounds like a reverb. And I have the dry wet down not too much, and I have the size kind of in the middle. So it's kind of a good sounding reverb to be in the plugin, and then maybe I could add delay or a third party reverb later in the production. Well, here's the problem though. At 88 milliseconds, I'm kind of in no man's land with the timing of the pre delay. So that means after I play a note, it's not going to be set to a grid essentially of when that reverb starts. And it's really easy to do that. So let's say I wanted to have, um, we'll work our way, we'll work, work our way kind of backwards, but going to, we'll start at the quickest note values. So if you're hanging around this 30, 20, 40 millisecond range, it makes more sense just to take it to a actual, timing value that's going to be in time with 120 beats per minute and that would be at about 58 milliseconds and I think as close as you can get in silent because you can't like type in in silent is 58.10 which is really close this is now a 30 second note pre-delay so basically a 30 second note will elapse and then your your, your uh, reverb will start and that's at your, your tempo of 128 So that is going to be really helpful when you think in a mix, in a song, let's say I have three leads stacked together in different synths and I have all different pre-delay amounts for my reverbs. That can start to get muddy because you're going to get these reverbs starting at different points in time and they might not coincide with your groove or your rhythm bed. So if you wanted to do a 24th note, you can turn this up to 78 or around there. So try to get as close as you can. So again, 78.10. So that's happening at 24th note, so I'll kind of give a triplet feel. And if I turn up the dry wet amount, you can actually start to hear that. And this becomes really useful for anyone who's producing big room, main room, where you have those drops and you're doing like... You know, you're doing that whole thing where you're hitting one note a bunch. That will, that will really help because then it's actually creating kind of this effect, almost kind of like a, like a side chain feel. And when you start to side chain, when you're using rhythmic pre-delays, everything starts to glue together really, really nicely. So let's talk about 16th notes. Now that's gonna be a really common one that I, I actually typically use a lot. That is at 117 milliseconds. So the closest you can get in silent 
is 117.14, and it sounds like this. So it's starting to get more noticeable in effect, even with the dry wet down. But that will be, that's a good one to use on leads and things like that where you really, really want it to stick out. And finally, to do a 1 8 note, you'll crank your pre-delay up to 234 milliseconds. So silent isn't, doesn't, doesn't have that, as you can see. It stops at 200 milliseconds. And that's why I said silent reverb is good. But in the context of a, of a mix, it can only do so much, and it has a very, very digital sound. So taking this outside of silent now, Let's say I turn this back down to 58, so it's a 30 second note value, which is really minimal, and just turn the dry wet down. So we have barely any reverb on it. Now let's say I go to a third party reverb. I just pulled up Valhalla, uh, vintage verb. Now what I can do, I just said that if you wanted an eighth note, you're gonna do a value of 234 milliseconds. Let me type that in correctly. All right, so then it'll do 234.0, I think 234 actually 0.11, and I just lost it, is the closest you can get in this specific reverb. All right, so we'll just stop at about 234.24 because that's pretty close. And now if I play this with silence reverb set to a 30 second note. <laughs> You can, you can hear how that, that has that distinct bounce and character to it. So I can turn the mix down a little, and I will turn the click back. So now you can actually hear that that has that rhythmic bounce that will fit your track. I've had some questions on a couple of my demos about the reverb and how it sits when, I, when I'm using third party. And that's typically what I'm doing. And I'll do this inside of synths like Massive, Silent, whatever I'm using, Spire, Anna. I will always make sure my reverbs are time synced to one another. And it's kind of cool to build off of them, especially when you're stacking leads. It might be cool to have one of the leads at a slightly different pre-delay that's still rhythmically in time with your track than the other one. So then like I'm doing right now, I have Silent doing a 30 second note pre-delay and I have Valhalla Vintage Verb doing an eighth note pre-delay. So then you get two different type of reverb sounds doing two different pre-delay and rhythmic values. It can make things really bounce in an EDM track. So there is some tips and tricks that are pretty quick and easy to actually learn and grasp on how to make silence reverb a little bit more musical and useful just using that one knob pre-delay. So if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't checked out soundtutorials.com, head on over there. Tons of cool things sound. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.